controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. Today we're talking about marijuana. <laughs> Mary Jane. More specifically, edibalis. Edibalis. Cannibals. <laughs> Cannibals. Whoa, no. <laughs> Cannabis edibles. Whoa, similar name. So we're going to talk about how the fact that when you eat marijuana, it's very different than when you smoke it. We're going to talk about whether it's actually, with new research, maybe worse for you, but also explain to you how marijuana works in your body. And yeah, just talk about this like really interesting science that's constantly evolving as the world becomes more into marijuana, aka I just like saying that because I'm so into weed. I'm just like, <laughs> no, everyone true. loves it, right? Most places that have legalized it, the stats obviously show like an, ad an adoption of that. Um, and just on the science of it all, like I think it's interesting because we're going from a space where only really smoking was that available, but now like yeah. a lot of people are doing edibles and there's maybe not, there's just starting to be that research to be like, wait, we assume it's better for you in some ways, but like, is it actually? And so that's the question of today, I think. We are in Toronto, Canada, where we can buy our weed from Justin Trudeau's goddamn house <laughs> if we want to. It's everywhere. And whereas like you might be in a country where it's still illegal, decriminalized, and like True. you definitely should like know that <laughs> like True. before you access marijuana. But mm -hmm. every other store in Toronto right now is just has a weed leaf on it and it's like cannabis for days. Yeah. Spelled they're all struggling so hard to find a name because there's so many taken. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like every time you're like, Oh, that's a really interesting, chic Japanese looking store. I wonder if they have trinkets for my home. And you're like, Oh no, it's just pre rolls <laughs> and edibles. Like it's just, it's everywhere. And somehow they're always big stores and you're like, do you need this much space yeah. to have like an Apple like display of just yeah. like literally yeah. a package of edibles. And you're like, this surely is a bad way waste of space like a, you normally a clothing store would take up this shop and now there's like one precious joint displayed on you know what yeah I mean? <laughs> and also like they're they look beautiful but they still smell like dank weed like it is funny you're always like wow you've done such an amazing job to design this but it it does smell like garbage yeah i mean speaking you, of edibles no stank yeah well there's a stank on the nose well, okay make them and also yesterday was 420. Yeah, which we're is recording this on 421. Holiday, and um, I actually didn't partake in the substance, and someone here did, and oh, it's not please. the pothead. Well, yeah, I, I actually didn't realize, you know, so for those who don't know, 420 is like <laughs> weed day. I have no idea yeah, why. I don't even want to know the history because it's probably problematic or something. It, it's dumb. probably it's a probably dumb. reason. I don't know. I, it's related to whatever. Who knows? But it but reeked of weed at 420. Even since we've been in university, in yeah, one, yeah, it's like on 420, April 20th at 420 is kind of like, especially when we were in uni, it was like the time to light up. And then it was like, you know, what do you say? Like transgressive? Is that the right word? Like it, it was like, you know, fuck the people were like having a weed day because it wasn't legal yet. And like our campus would have like thousands of people standing outside smoking. And it was kind of like, whoa, we're all, well, I was kind of just like watching from the side. Um, but it was like, everyone's disobeying the law. Like, and obviously weed became legal in Canada because people hold those views. In the but at the place. ripe age of 35 is when you were like 420, baby. Yeah. No, but I actually didn't realize yesterday it was 420 until like 8 p.m. last night and was like, oh my God. So you <laughs> I did have to celebrate. You did. <laughs> 810. Yeah, something like 420 that. 420 slash yeah. 810. Yeah, I'm a little slow on the uptake, so double the time. I have a really <laughs> bad story for everyone because if there's one thing the scientific research says, it's that the developing brain is not going to be adapting well to THC hitting it. So essentially, a lot of research into the negative effects of marijuana are really concerned with young people. Like adolescents? Adolescents smoking I still marijuana. feel like an adolescent. You're not. Um, you're way you past what? it. They like they say in um, like the studies that you might as well wait till you're 21. Like if you're young, just finish yeah. university. If you're going to wait to start, it's also going to make marijuana more enjoyable to you. And the uh, the really negative effects happen mm. when you're young. I'm here do to as I say, not as I do over here. Yeah, I'm here to tell you that that is not what happened with me. And I actually left. And we're seeing the result right now. <laughs> I left an exam, a physics exam, early because it went till 4.30 in order to make it to a place to smoke weed for 4.20. Like I literally was like- <laughs> Skipped your exam. In a third year university where I'm like, like I'm, not, I'm not first year, third year university. <laughs> I remember being like, are you kidding me? Is it even legal to have an exam <laughs> from 3 till 4.30 on 420? That is absolutely <laughs> fucked. And then I was like, fine, I'm going to study hard. And I like at 4.15, I 
was like, yeah, I did that. And I was like the first one to stand up because obviously <laughs> it's an exam. You should be taking the time. Waltzed my ass out of there, ran to Johnson Green to smoke up and was like, I did it, babe. It's like, that is not cool. And that's why you had to stay an extra semester at university. No, I just stay an extra semester because I did science and art, <laughs> babe. Mm, that's what you want to tell everyone. You flunked that class. That's actually true. That, I'm, I'm like kidding. actually <laughs> mad. I'm like, it's so annoying that institutions are built where you can't have science and art degrees. I tried to do both and they were like, you physically can't do this in four years. Thank uh, you very much. I actually probably did better than you on that physics You exam. definitely didn't. I definitely no, did. You didn't. I know you were I did always better. crying because you would leave and I'd be like, hmm, funny. One percentage point above <laughs> you and I got high on Johnston Green. Um, Definitely physics. I did better than you. I remember that specifically because I did really well on that final exam because it was worth 50% of your I mind. would have done really well if I had waited the 15 minutes to finish. <laughs> yeah, but probably. I had priorities. We should pull up our old university transcripts. Is that what they're called? Where you have your grades. I'm actually curious. And like we should, <laughs> yeah, I would love to do that. Just like see just who were we? Your yeah. goddamn face. <laughs> no, you. I will say this: I'm not trying to be like cheeky and better than. Like you are smarter than me. You perform better in most subjects, despite trying way less hard. But that's the truth. But I actually just think you physics, probably beat me in physics. I remember being proud of it because I was like, I beat him, but I was like, I tried so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I was absolutely ripped. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. Let's go through the process of how marijuana affects your body. Okay. So fascinatingly, you have endocannabinoids naturally in your body, which are like chemicals that were only discovered that you had them naturally when people started smoking weed hmm. <laughs> and realizing the effects like of the weed. Is. And we're like, wait, they're mimicking this other thing in your body naturally. Right. That would exist whether or not you're smoking or ingesting. Yes. And they endocannabinoids, they affect neurons and receptors in your brain and nervous system. So they flow throughout your body. Again, if you've never touched weed, you still have endocannabinoids within you. And it control, they control naturally your appetite, pain sensation, mood, memory. Uh-huh. Interesting. Those are all things that will be affected by the THC cannabinoids that you ingest. It's important to know that like the cannabis plant, which has a lot of, it actually has a lot of different chemicals that can affect you, but we talk mostly about THC and CBD. When that THC binds to the receptors in your body, when you ingest it or you smoke it, it is having an atten- intense effect on your body. Some people say thousand fold more effect on your neurons than your natural endocannabinoids. Okay. Yeah. So that is why it's a drug. <laughs> it feels great. And that is why you will feel enhanced things and why you might not even know you have endocannabinoids in your day-to-day life because when you have, They're not that potent. Yes. And so that's like an important part of... I mean, like any drug, really, you're like flooding your body with either like, like a chemical or something yes. that's... Yeah, whether it's true. whether it's like something that's already in your body or whether it's stimulating something in your body, it's usually stimulating something to a degree in your body that you would never naturally experience. Yeah, and it, without it, like the highest euphoric moment of your life, like having a child or something. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. But if you um, the THC or playing the new Zelda <laughs> or playing the new Zelda, having a child or playing the new Zelda, very similar. <laughs> Um, the THC itself is not the exact same shape of endocannabinoids that are in your body, but it like it like mimics it, and that's kind of how a lot of drugs. That's the work. cutest part about like biochemistry. We're like, oh, it's not the same. It's actually not the same. It's just like it fits into the receptor. Yeah, similar. like it's yeah. just like oh, I I can fit this little arm in here. <laughs> I know it is actually crazy that all it comes down to is like molecules Shapes. fitting together turning latches and keys literally to move other molecules that go into your DNA to like cause different things to phosphorylate. It's like, yeah, but that's how I know that crazy. we're, or I'm stupid and a biologist at heart because I know deep down there's like chemists and physicists who are like, yeah, but it's all about like the electromagnetic bonds and like, yeah, it's actually yeah. not about the shapes, even though it is about, the but shapes. it is about the shapes, but the electromagnetic bonds are ultimately what hold it. Yeah. So yeah. But you know what I mean? Where you're like the shape, you're, I think I just, it's so much easier for me and a little biologist to be like, Oh, there's these cute triangle shapes. And then there's these cute, like, Oh, like the, triangle like shapes the and, high school version. Yeah. But at the deep level, it's yeah. like so much more um, yeah. technical, but it is, complex. it is a triangle fitting into a triangle shape. Just, it's a very complicated globular and, controlled by many different forces, but it's not that different. Bio organic chemistry, as someone who was like a visual and like an artist, I was like, this is the easiest, most fun course. And it is very interesting that everyone hates it. Because it's the yeah, most visual. Are you screaming right now. You being I, like, I know, it was I know, I know, easiest. I know. We didn't take organic chem. Well, there was organic chemistry in our biochemistry. Yeah, yeah but we I didn't did. There was, there was, I took organic chemistry. You, I didn't take an actual yeah. organic chemistry. I took course. organic chemistry because I was like, this is fun. Uh, yeah, I did. I took just o- learning or- all the different, like, because it's and visual. Shapes. You got to draw out 
you get to, instead of like when you balance a chemical equation and you're using just letters mm -hmm. and numbers, symbols, organic chemistry involves you drawing out the molecule mm -hmm. with the bonds. And like at a certain point I was like, it's just about figuring out like, okay, if a water is leaving and oxygen is leaving a carbon dioxide is leaving. So it's leaving from this one molecule on the left. It's now gone. Okay. Now, Mensa. No, it's not Mensa. It's, it's just not, about, I no, don't know, it's like not memorizing Mensa. It's just the way it's in different chemicals. No, it's just the way my brain works. I'm like, this is easier. It's just the way my beautiful no, brain works. No, I feel like there's other aspects of science that are so like much more mathematical and Mensa and mm -hmm. harder for me. Like I need, I just love the idea of like drawing shit out. Mm -hmm. This was a side note. I'm sorry. I started it. Your, your beautiful mind. And um, I'm just this dumb little peasant. Over well, here. no, <laughs> relating it to organic chemistry, THC um, has a similar organic chemical shape to your endocannabinoids. Therefore can bind to the receptors in your body and cause intensity of your endoc endocannabinoid receptors that would never be able to happen naturally. Mm -hmm. And that's called getting high. <laughs> And so when you smoke it, you have to heat it real, real hot and it goes into your lungs and then it goes into your bloodstream, which goes to your heart and goes directly to your brain. So there's no metabolizing of the drug. It goes right, right. to your brain, yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. Not like, obviously, you're not snorting it, but yeah. in from a into the, it's way it's faster, faster, obviously, yeah. Yeah. The access point of the lungs is like really one of the quickest ways to get something into you. Yeah, well, because the blood goes from the heart to your lungs, then from your lungs back to your heart, and then to your brain. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, if you're putting it in the lungs, it's going back to the heart brain. Mm -hmm. It's like, it is intensely fast. Mm -hmm. And that's why it hits you really quickly, and you get high within like two minutes. Eating it is so interesting because it's now going into your stomach, your GI system, your intestines, being absorbed into your blood. The important part about when you eat something is that from your bloodstream, it doesn't just go to your brain or your lungs, it goes to your liver to be metabolized. And this is where things change for when you eat marijuana because the enzymes in your liver metabolize the marijuana to become a more potent chemical, hmm. a more high inducing chemical and you will be getting higher and it will affect your brain in a different way from eating an edible versus smoking it, which I think is so interesting. And a lot of people don't know because it's like, they just like, Oh, eating versus smoking. It's maybe how long it takes, but it's like, you are actually getting higher. And I think a lot of people can relate at, to that at a proportional rate though. I mean, like it, you won't necessarily get higher. Oh, if you ate less, right? Like yeah, you're true. talking about like it has a different impact, but like if you yeah, eat less, right. you could smoke more. Like it's not like a black and white thing. But it's like if you're doing the same amount, okay, it's making you higher. And it's, um, I was like listening to a science podcast, and they were like so funny and cute, and had never eaten smoked marijuana in their lives, and so they were yes. like, you know how like pot like other podcasts, not like our insane <laughs> podcast, will be like taking a microphone into the edible shop, and it will start with like oh yeah, like you sounds hear the noise of the like, street. Ding. Yeah, like, and it's like, hey, welcome. I, yeah, and they're like, I would like to get my edible. And you hear like a shop person you're like, and you're like, <laughs> yes, like immersive. And it's like, wow. We used to kind of try that kind of stuff, like not as immersive, but it's like good for those people who are doing Yeah, yeah, work. like they brought a microphone to buy edible and they were like, since I'd never done edibles ever, <laughs> I found the smallest gummy possible of two milligrams and I split it in half for like the first yeah. night. And I was just like, this chick's doing one milligram. <laughs> like it was just like, that was their big intro. And I'm like, Oh my God, if we had to like bring our microphone into what we do, it'd be like, well, this is the 14,000th time I've done an edible <laughs> and I'm going to go for 10 milligrams to start. And then I'm going to dance to Rosalia like for 48 hours. Anyways. Um, oh that Sometimes freaked I'm worried me out. about that. Yeah. I what? mean like that we do so much weed. Yes. And like, <laughs> like yes, more recently, it's like, freaking me out too. That's why I want. I also want but to talk I about okay, that. no, like we don't need to talk about this too much. I'm not like a crazy pothead, and I, most of my life I wasn't. But I'm like in a stage now. Okay? But like, don't look at me like that. No, because I'm like, it's not like you've never seen one like that before. <laughs> <the words of Gaga. laughs> I just think like I'm like I think you are now. Okay, because I'm like I think beyond. by definition I am. <laughs> yes, yes, because I think like well, a lot of these research they talk about heavy cannabis use being more than twice a week. Yeah, I mean, but there's definitely, like, weeks that go by that I am just, like, I don't. Yeah, when we're in Colombia and we can't access it. Yeah, fine. But, I mean, even <laughs> at home, there are times. Like, I, I'm, yeah, I don't you, find myself, like, desperately attached to it. But yeah. when things are, like, chill and, Yeah, like, you do not, go times where I'm just, like, 
red in the eyes looking at you like, damn, it hasn't been <laughs> high in a while. <laughs> but it's more usually because I'm anxious about like other stuff that has to be done and it will just like get in the way. So I don't feel like I'm like desperately addicted, but I am. Our life right now has been like fairly relaxed. And so yeah. it's like the evenings I'm just like, oh. I guess it wouldn't hurt and I wouldn't I'm not worried about like being too foggy like today because yesterday I was more funny I'm like I actually am like super burnt out really yeah I'm feeling fresh interesting yeah. didn't have weed <laughs> hair flick <laughs> no I guess I'm saying I wanted to bring up and maybe this is a different episode of ours like just the overall negative impacts of weed because I oftentimes have glorified it as yeah like, yeah it's really it's enjoyable it's a way to relax but I, I am more and more in my life like I, I want to remember like yeah. this is not a good thing well it, it affects your so another thing is that your endocannabinoid system naturally has a role when you flood it constantly with marijuana you're impacting the ability for the the normal role that it plays in your life to be impacted yeah. so it affects your mood it affects your memory and it affects your ability to focus yeah so if you're relying on marijuana like me to do those things then it will potentially be harder for you to modulate your mood yeah have an okay memory and focus like that's not can we do an episode just like called like the negative side of marijuana yeah because yeah, i feel we'll like we down. like obviously talk well, about it very casually we're that. from part of the world that is just like super accessible super acceptable no not taboo people smoke weed in the like streets. only focus on the negative that is interesting yeah and and obviously like knowing that it's us we're coming from a place as people who do it so i am just like not to like spook anyone or scare anyone but i for my own sake want to be like okay I, for a long time, especially with edibles, been like, okay, it's not hurting my lungs. It's like, I feel like it's a nice way to relax and have fun and these things. But now I'm like, maybe I should take a step back. Just Well, to let's talk about that. The lungs. Like, that is why mm -hmm. edibles are, quote unquote, considered to Healthier. be better for your yeah. lungs. Because you are yeah. not impacting with fire and chemicals and the burning of the yeah, weed like at like 800 degrees Celsius when you're like burning it. In fact, you actually have to burn the weed at a much lower temperature to make edibles. It's like 150 degrees. Like it has to, low, it has to stay time. low. You have to use all these different types of extraction to get it into like the jube jube or like the like yummy thing you eat. <laughs> but the fact that it's more potent, some of the studies are saying we are now looking at the impacts of marijuana on the brain. Edibles could be potentially more impactful and negatively on your endocannabinoid system and right. brain because of the fact that there's these extra potent chemicals that your liver is activating through the consumption of eating the weed that that might be one way for you to think about not just eating an edible like oh it's so much better because yeah, it's, it's actually right? yeah. affecting your brain differently and more potently totally i think you're right i, I don't think about that i often just think because i don't like like smoking in the first place not to say like i do vape sometimes oh, i i don't because of my lungs really i love the like oh i'm having a joint with my friend at a bar like, oh <laughs> like and like if someone sees me just like huffing the joint they're like that guy's sexy like you that's think, like what so? I think i do not which is bad that. like obviously it's like me literally <laughs> so being, like, i don't have cool. that image at all for whether it's regular cigarettes or no not like, cigarettes but for a joint i'm like oh what a sexy carefree <laughs> person um but to me, like, you know, there is obviously so many studies and decades of research on the effects of inhalation of smoke into your lungs, whether that's yeah. from like tobacco, but also including um, like actual weed buds and now liquid like vape. Yeah, smoke, which vaping is has crazy. another element yeah. of different kinds of chemicals that are entering into like, your lung okay. and causing different long-term effects for people, whether they're flavored and how that impacts. So like, that's why for me, and uh, it's not like I'll still vape sometimes, but it is like that felt like a great way to be like, wow, I'm not even affecting my body in that what, way. By eating it. Yeah, yeah it yeah. just was like an easy I know, shift I know. Me for too, me, me to too. be like, wow, I'm skipping this thing that we objectively know oh, is bad. actually yeah. really bad for you. But now there's this big blank of like, am I ignoring your brain? Potentially? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like literally, I don't know. The most important organ, some may say. But I mean, obviously, like smoking still impacts your brain. But I know, saying, I know. Like, I'm, I'm saying yeah. this is how I'm trying to contextualize through the research that like weed is not good and um, 
yeah, like, okay, maybe that will be our other video of like why weed's bad, which is LOL from like two of the biggest <laughs> potheads in North America. But oh, I, please. I, <laughs> I am definitely not that. <laughs> throwing you under the bus. Doing it. Like, I don't think in. someone doing it maybe twice a week is one of yeah. the biggest And the reason I North didn't America. on 420 was because I had like eight days in a row. <laughs> like, I actually was like on the night before, some might call it 419. I was like, I'm not going to consume weed tomorrow because I have too much. This is me being an adult and then i woke up and everyone like numerous of my friends were like 420 baby and i was like are you kidding it's like the one day i've decided and i was like i'm not i'm not and then my pothead friend we played tennis and sometimes we play tennis stoned and he was very good stoned really and i was like it was taking everything wow. in me. i was like why is he beating me stoned <laughs> well okay that f getting high can increase your focus which can be part of the reason why people use it to for me like for example as a bit of a crutch like it helps me focus this isn't for everyone yeah and, not for me and a lot of research on marijuana comes down to a statement that you cannot expect this complicated drug to have the same effect on people yeah. that it is on you it's unlike something like mdma or alcohol which they've seen can affect the brain and nervous system in specific ways with specific outcomes. Marijuana is all over the map for a lot of people. You can have would, the same type of what? So I was going to say though, like obviously like alcohol impacts people differently, like maybe not biophysically, but I just mean like some people act very different. When yes, they're drunk, yeah. Right? But they, but the actual Compared. impacts on the neurons and the depressing, like the depression of the nervous system is more you like specific. And okay. from what I understand and from like, the discussion parts of the papers I was reading, they were like, this is a lot more complicated. Mm. And they specifically said MDMA and alcohol. Fair. Okay. That doesn't mean you're right. Some people are like, they're obviously um, having like a kind of grouped effect on your brain. Yeah. Like people who are smoking weed are having a sort of similar experience, yes. obviously. But some people can be extremely paranoid. Some people can be more relaxed. Right. Some people can be tired. Yeah. Some people can be like, it, it got more yeah. energy, less energy, yeah. hungry, like like nauseated like it can go yes. on you're and right, you're all smoking spectrum. maybe like the same joint right is like what they're wanting people to understand so that you don't just like force people to like consume marijuana because it's affecting you, you one think, way yeah yeah true yeah i mean i think that's an interesting part about it i think like what seems to be the common thread is that it just like makes things kind of like funny or in yeah interesting or just like you kind of feel like the things you're watching or doing are like at a higher level of amazing it heightens your ability to think ideas are interesting yeah, like based on its the amount of times impacts. i've watched the tears of the kingdom trailer stone and i'm just like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> this is the greatest thing ever. i know that's why weed's so fun because yeah. you're like watching a youtube video and you're like is this the best youtube video i've ever seen and then you're like <laughs> then the next day you watch it, you're like i'm so embarrassed yeah that is obviously maybe not cool but it's like <laughs> yeah so um I have some stats on like edibles versus smoking in terms of like safety that I could go into a little yeah. bit. Um, so there is a study I found that looked at maybe 2,500 marijuana linked visits to the ER between 2012 and 2016 Ooh. in Denver. I think this is maybe around the time that like before and after it was legalized. Okay. Um, I kind of don't know. I add that and I feel like I read that in the study, but now I don't have it in front of me. So, only 9% of the ER visits were linked to edibles, which is low. But of those, proportionately more of them were, ca were causing short-term psychiatric conditions. 18% of edible users uh, were suffering symptoms such as anxiety and psychosis compared to 11% of smokers. Hmm. Um, there were more heart issues for people who had edibles. And... Hmm. Oh, that, that was it. Um, but the study obviously was like, this is correlative. Like, we're, we can't say that edibles are causing these things, but people who are coming into the ER who have had edibles are at a higher chance of these problems for, hmm. some, for whatever reason. Maybe they're different kind of people we don't actually know yet. Maybe people who do edibles are also have another activity they do that we can't yet understand. Or they're like, if you were older and new to marijuana, you'd probably mm. start with edibles. Totally. Like that might, yeah. you, maybe it is an older demographic, but... Um, whereas smoking was linked to greater gastrointestinal issues. Like, Interesting. Cause that's yeah. so weird. It's not going yeah. in your GI tract, but maybe it just like impacts it more. Yeah. That, that is interesting. Yeah. I also, yeah, that it weird. So, I mean, obviously, like you said, there just is a different impact. Um, 
this is is just one study and it's interesting and it's not like the examples are so extremely different it's not like edible users are suffering like 50 times more or something but um it's worth knowing like there is a difference and there there is a lot of research about how marijuana can negatively impact people who have family histories of psychosis mm. so it's like there are hospitals like people no, it's very hard to overdose on marijuana to get to the point where like your system shuts down and you die. For example, with alcohol, that can happen. Opioids, that can happen. Whereas with marijuana, a lot of people will be like, you can't overdose like, on Or marijuana. the risk is so much lower. Yeah, right? like, yeah. But when even when they think about pain regulation, because endocannabinoid receptors and systems in your body modulate pain, there are some scientists who are trying to figure out how marijuana could be used instead of opioids, which are so mm -hmm. dangerous, and you can overdose on and kill so many totally. people. Totally, yeah, yeah. There's definitely a good cause and many reasons where like marijuana, whether smoked or eaten, is like a viable and potentially more like medicinal, useful yeah, medicinal drug. practice. And, that, and that's like what started the legalization of it was that scientists and doctors were able to say, okay, fine, don't worry about random people smoking it. We can show that this is helpful to people who are in like terminal condition yeah. and it can make their lives easier or more enjoyable than they would be without. But my point was that like the, that doesn't mean that it can't cause psychosis mm -hmm. in people who have a history of totally, that. Yeah. So that's like, an, like another part of marijuana that I think, some people don't realize is like you might not overdose, but you can end up in the hospital. Yeah. You can end up ha going through a psychotic state based on this drug, which is another, but it's like now we're entering the negative weed episode, but like that yeah. is a really it's important, to important know. thing to know because and yeah. like any drug, I think, like we said, it can affect anyone differently based on your genetics, based on your family history, based on your propensity to have an addictive personality or rely on something as a crutch for like emotional support or for relaxation in the same way that if you have like liver problems in your family, alcohol is probably going to be more problematic. If you have like propensity for lung cancer, like smoking is going to be a, an issue. So like, like if you have, you may not even know what these conditions are, but weed might be a more negative thing for you, and you might have to evaluate yeah. that on your own when you interact with yeah, it. Yeah, it might not cause overdose, but it could create a psychotic state, which is leaving you in the hospital. And like, there's a there is a gradient of that. You don't yeah. have to be in the hospital for something to be not good for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, on another level of edibles versus smoking, and edibles maybe being more problematic is. You know, obviously there's so much more available now and studies both in Canada and the U.S. have found a big increase of accidental consumptions. Oh my by God, that's kids. so bad. By kids. I just so like, it's like think pediatric. about being a parent. I would really hate that. Yeah. It's your fault. <laughs> yeah. You're like, did you grab the iced tea with the confusing <laughs> wrapper on top of it? No. Yeah. Obviously at the, at the bottom line of this, you know, people have alcohol in their homes and have to learn how to keep that away from kids. Yeah. And keep it safe. People, but alcohol tastes awful to that's kids. That's true. Yeah. And These it's not designed with colorful packaging. are absolutely delicious. Yeah. They're the best gummies I've ever had. The Sours <laughs> with a Z yeah. from Toronto, wherever. Oh, isn't They're it? They're so good. Oh, Sours. You're right. Yeah, it's, okay. I'm not kidding. Like I sometimes eat, like I'm like, oh, I'm going to do eight milligrams. And I'm like, well, no, I'm going to do 10 because that's the most delicious candy I've ever had. <laughs> Um, yeah, so kids are finding these. Um, in a U.S. study, 23% of the patients were hospitalized with a significant increase in both ICU and non-ICU admissions. They found wow. acute toxicity in a lot of kids. Wow. Um, the most frequent health outcome children experienced was central nervous system depression. So that means like drowsiness, lower blood pressure, and slurred speech. Yeah. So like for a sense. kid, it's yeah, like that, way more intense. It's even, so right? much more intense. And as we, I was saying earlier, like a lot of the research on the developing brain of humans, that it's like before the age of 21, this is about it's bad. The THC is affecting the growth of your brain, the ability for your brain to evolve into what it would be without the impacts of the THC. Mm -hmm. So like if you're giving it to like, that's the people talking about teenagers, let alone like a toddler or something. Yeah. That's really intense. And you'd go to the hospital obviously. Cause it's like, you'd be scared. Yeah. And I mean, think of it like, Say you're even oh having five milligrams, like depending on your body weight, even as an adult, if somebody's like much smaller than I am, say weighs like three quarters of my weight, they're going to have a totally different experience in a different dose. Skinny so, as a needle. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm saying they're smaller than me. Um, <laughs> but so if a kid weighs half your weight or if it weighs literally yeah. like one seventh your weight or, you know, like you got to keep huge difference. It's why it's impossible to open them. I still can't open edibles. Yeah. But people have said like, 
you know, it, it, all it takes is scissors, like in a pot, like those bags oh, are yeah. actually challenging to open, but you could just take scissors and uh, cut yeah, it open. That's true. So like, it is a matter of, okay, there maybe needs to be a cabinet out of reach from kids or locked yeah, from yeah, kids. Yeah, like, edible. Because they're yeah. so simply, like you said. And they, they look good. And yeah. But there's nothing more awful than that feeling when you're an adult and you're like, I can't get in this kid's lock. Yeah. No, no. That, I'm like, every <laughs> time I, like, I'm like, I've opened edibles for years and I still, I'm just like, if you throw me a new yeah. technique, it's no. those are some of the coolest designs. Actually, I'm like, I don't know how these work because yeah. usually when you want to open something, it's like your brain needs to comprehend like what the fact that you have to on. pull it from just that one part and then it opens. Like <laughs> Justin Trudeau, you're a smart man. Whoever figured that out, but obviously not smart enough because all these kids are in the hospital. Thanks a lot. <laughs> no, that's probably in Denver. You know what I mean? They don't yeah, got the regulation. True. This Canadian government's on it. Um, I think like from my research, it's still definitely early days with edible research when it comes to comparing edibles to smoking i don't think there's like a lot of high quality research to compare the differences yeah. right we're either comparing cannabis as a whole yeah and then the only thing that kind of comes up in this space right now is these like mi minor differences in hospitalization in adults and then the accessibility to kids yeah being like the main conversations yeah. but that doesn't mean there aren't more i was that. reading the one about also stating that it impacts your brain with more potency yeah so sorry. the okay. negative impacts of marijuana could be like intensified through edibles yeah mm -hmm. which i'm like that's interesting because they the, no no one can claim that it's better no one can not claim that it is, in fact, better for your throat and your lungs to right. eat marijuana. Like, yeah. everyone knows that. If you're worried about your throat and lungs, which I am, mm -hmm. it is and going to be And if you had be to choose one. Yeah. But now they're like, but let's look at the brain. Cause, yeah. Yeah. And see, like, what outcomes are associated. And it lasts longer, too. It, it does last totally. longer. It fires within your system for a lot longer than when you smoke it, which might also be an impact if you're kind of wanting to, you know, not have it impact you for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of aspects. yeah. I really just before this, I was saying I want to do an episode on marijuana and sleep. You know, I'm obsessed with sleep, and because yeah. I know so many people are fascinated behind how alcohol is such a bad thing for your sleep, and I had made a video about that. So I I know like there is more research coming about marijuana and its impact on sleep, and I'm really curious about that. So and if you're yeah. if you're under 21, I wish someone said just wait till you're 21 to smoke weed. I know that's but really never hard listened. to say. What you would have never listened. I know. Like I kids know. are doing crazy things. Have you seen Euphoria? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yo, I hate that like random old man's fucking concept of kids. Like that show's creepy. Um, but yeah, you're right. I might not have listened. You're right. I might not have I guess many people like but all There's people no who told way. me you were it was illegal when you were doing <laughs> it. Like you were not doing it out of like a, the like authority telling you yeah. it was okay or not okay. All the people who told me not to like smoke weed was like they'd have like cops come in and tell me and i was always like ew pigs like i like <laughs> like i i always was like cops are creepy I that think i it just all it goes back to for kids like everything and for adults is education's important they're, yeah that's they're what i mean gonna make if their decisions i do so think propose it like here is the difference just yes. so you know so you can make your smart decisions. i think if my science teachers who i loved and respected had like a conversation like this with scientific evidence about marijuana and like brain development i would have had a better reaction than a cop who i don't know coming in and being like this is what marijuana looks right. like if you do it you might get caught and go to jail yeah, yeah. and like just like <laughs> yelling Obviously. at you and being like this is what heroin looks like and being like i'm pretty sure i'm not gonna like interact with heroin i mean it's the exact same reason why like abstinence practice doesn't or teachings don't work it's yeah. like it's more important to provide options you're not going to stop all kids from having sex yeah and so providing like protection providing medicine all these kind of things providing access to healthcare is like so important and marijuana like an education when you first do it it's so intense that it's like it yeah i was like in grade 10 or something it's like that's young yeah i definitely waited like, till i i must have like maybe tried it when i was in high school but like i don't think i really got high i probably like didn't i probably like did one puff and was like oh my god i'm so high yeah and also it wasn't I until was, like i met you over here <laughs> Oh, we don't want to get into that. I was thinking about how crazy you used to be yesterday. <laughs> like I was thinking about how you were like during 420 when you were smoking and I wasn't. I was like, he used to freaking make me feel like I was like, <laughs> like a drug lord. Absolute <laughs> like the drug lord of Toronto. Like because I like smoked my mono sometimes. Also, I was like, it was, you were so funny. Um, uh. But um, I 
People change. What yeah, no, say? no, I know. That's why I couldn't even remember that old you. Like it was crazy. <laughs> like, he would like look. We were getting so many. Oh my god, that was a different time. But um, I also think that who you're around impacts you a lot because I was hanging out with stoners. Hmm. I was like adjacent to stoner crew, so I always felt like I was barely consuming weed because like I was like I them. couldn't. Yeah, because yeah. every day after school I'd hang yeah. out with them and they would all smoke weed and I'd be like. I can't because if I go home high, I'm going to like have a panic attack like or, or like I just don't have it. in yeah. me. Like it affects me so much. I'm going to wait till a Friday night and we go see a movie and then I'm going to like have the time to come home and my parents are asleep or whatever. But I do remember 420 like was the first time I consumed weed at 420 and like went home. <laughs> it's actually like a good indication of how weed affects you. It makes you have heightened experiences and then also like paranoid. Like I remember going home and like for the first time ever in my life, entering my house stoned at five when like everyone's there <laughs> and being like, I'm going to study. And then going into my basement and like opening my biology textbook, which I never, I would have done that in my room. I don't know why I was in my basement. <laughs> and my dad walked down and was just like, hey, Greg. And like went to the laundry room. And I just remember being like, holy fuck, that's like my dad dad like i was just like that is what my dad does like it was just like the just my dad simply walking in front yeah. of me like blew my mind i'm like that's who made me this is like, like all i was doing last night with ernie my I was like, yeah. this is my dog <laughs> i know i live with this animal it was crazy and then he came out of the the laundry room and i was still staring at him <laughs> and he was like what's up and was i was like, like a happy 420 <laughs> or he was just he said like what's up and then i was like he knows I was like, he knows. And then I just was like, nothing, studying. And then it was like, you could, it was like, and then I just spiraled out of control. Like, he knows I'm oh high. Oh my God. Because I was staring at him, because being like, you're That's my dad. So good. Yeah, I'm way too. I, I would literally last time, like, Ernie knows I'm high. He knows I'm high. <laughs> I'm the same. Oh, speaking of, hey, Ernie. Uh, no, it is like a wild, it, it really changes your perception or it yeah. gives you gives you pause to really think deeply about like little things, yeah. which can be really interesting. And or I feel like, bad. Or bad, yeah. Yeah. And I but. think that like my pothead friends, what's dangerous about doing it too much, especially when you're young, is they were already not getting impacted. But like they I would like it to function normally. Yeah, and then when I would smoke weed with them, they'd be like, "You're insane," because I'd be like <laughs> so much higher and like listening to Coldplay and like crying, <laughs> and they'd be like, "Yo, like chill, man," and I'd be like, "Well, my nervous system isn't as adapted, okay?" Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's no good to get to a stage where you like don't. You, 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 it's like if you don't do it, you feel like crap, and if you do do it, you just feel normal. I also, I mean, my last, like, weeds, my last weed story, but like, I think I've told it before, but once I was in that same moment, like, they're all smoking so much weed, so they're not high, and they're all potheads and they love BMX biking. And I just like, it was like a Saturday, I'm like, I'm gonna partake, I'm gonna snipe, I don't even know if I can get it out. And so I like get high with them all, they're all BMX biking, and I'm like, okay, putting in my headphones, like, literally listening to like Feist or something, like, cry like literally were you crying. at like a bike pit yeah it okay. was like it was behind home depot there was like they'd made like jumps and stuff and i was so high and doing my own thing and i walked and then all of a sudden I just like kind of notice everyone screaming and i turn and i'm at like the bottom of the <laughs> jump and this guy who's like bmx biking was like what the fuck are you doing? and he slammed into me and oh i flew into God. a puddle <laughs> and i was covered in mud and i had to go home and my parents this is the part of the story i think i've told we're having like a like <laughs> afternoon all the neighbors over for like cheese and wine and i was covered in mud ripped out of my mind and i had to walk in and they were like what happened i was like i was hit by a bmx bike oh i'm just gonna go get changed and like it was the scariest change oh ever because like it was like every yeah. st Heaven, everyone's staring like yeah. mary jane like all the like moms are like greg what's up i'm like nothing's up <laughs> i could not i would die yeah. die of fear and they were all like, you idiot. Like, you just walked in front of right. the jump. With headphones. This is you. You haven't changed. <laughs> headphones on, ignoring everything around I, you. It was also crazy because I was like, I'm not BMX begging with these dudes. I, I know myself. I want to listen to Hillary Duff. So You're gonna I'm have, actually like, going to listen to Hillary broken Duff. Broken brain, destroyed lungs, and destroyed <laughs> eardrums. Those <laughs> yeah. are like clearly the, th the threads that you're like. Yeah. And they'd be like, bro, what are you listening to? And I'd be like, Hillary Duff. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I never even like Hillary lied about it. And like, But also Duff. corn or whatever. Like. <laughs> <laughs> insane wow oh. i need to stop okay <laughs> yeah okay well that'll be another episode yeah thanks for listening post <laughs> oh you, you i was like you can say goodbye no for i've once said i've said enough life. okay see you guys later we'll uh, see you next week bye